Well, Razorback fans, I know that something that everyone wants to know about is the NIL and how the Razorbacks are doing with the NIL among the rest of the schools. Well, I tell you what, we got some insider information. We know exactly what Arkansas is doing with NIL and how good it's going for them. So let's talk about it on today's Locked On Razorbacks podcast. You are Locked On Razorbacks, your daily podcast on the Arkansas Razorbacks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And welcome into Locked On Razorbacks podcast. I am your host, John Neighbors. I am also the host of Out of Bounds. You can catch every weekday afternoon from 1 to 4 on 103.7 The Buzz and 103.7 TheBuzz.com. Hope everybody's having a wonderful Tuesday as uh, we're getting ready for a great week, hopefully, all of us. And uh, we're going to go through uh, a few things, talk a little basketball, and also talk about a big story uh, dealing with uh, the SEC and uh, something stupid I think they're going to do. But I wanted to use this opportunity to talk about the NIL for Arkansas because we have some time, at least at the time of the recording of this podcast, uh, where it's kind of slowing down a little bit, not a whole lot of news going on. Of course, once I say that and put this podcast up for Tuesday morning, it's just going to be blowing up with all types of craziness. So I can't wait for that. But uh, there was something that really got my interest. And I've been seeing stuff with the U of A where they have done this one Arkansas deal dealing with the NIL. And they even started this deal where they were doing some uh, customizable jerseys that they, they'll be able to sell and it'll go towards NIL. And, um, you know, they're, they're basically saying, hey, help us out with the NIL. Start putting some money into it, and which I love. I think it's a great idea. And I think it's a great way that if you're a Razorback fan and you truly want to get involved in helping out the student athletes and being able to make the most of their name, image and likeness, as well as to provide opportunities for great marketable athletes to attend the University of Arkansas, I think that this is something that you absolutely should get in on. But earlier this week, or I should say last week, on my show Out of Bounds on 103.7 The Buzz, I had the opportunity to talk with Terry Prentice, who is the Associate Athletic Director up there at the U of A, who's directly involved with the One Arkansas program and uh, has been the guy that has been all involved with NIL at the University of Arkansas since it, it very first got started. And Terry's a dear friend of mine. And uh, he, he's been around for a while, and I've known him ever since I was in college at the U of A, and he does a phenomenal job of uh, being able to do these types of things. And he came on my show, and I thought he had a really intriguing quote about NIL and how it compares to other schools with Arkansas and the amount of money that they're able to put into it, and also gave some specifics as far as what some of the athletes, the student athletes at the University of Arkansas have been earning via NIL. So I'm just going to play the clip for you. It's about two minutes long, and it's him talking about it on the show Out of Bounds on 103.7 The Buzz, and we'll give some reactions to it. Take a listen. There's no central database. There's no one software that every school uses. I think the NCAA tried to, tried to do something like that originally, uh, but obviously it didn't end up working out. So it's hard to hard to really compare, but you're talking to student athletes that are coming from other places um, and even seeing what's out there, I'd, I'd really have to believe that we're really in that top group in the SEC as far as NIL is concerned. I point to one Arkansas and that they're really one of, if not the only NIL entity or collective that has full-time employees working on their behalf, not volunteers, uh, which most of these other schools actually have or had had up until um, very, very recently. So I think it's going well. Uh, obviously, our coaches have, a, have played a big role in that and, and being the great coaches they are and putting together successful programs because people like supporting winners, right? Um, so it's made NIL even more appealing. Uh, but no, I'd like to think we're, we're doing pretty well and schools are um, you know, looking, looking to Arkansas, also looking to you know, our laws, our policies, things that have, have given us a, a leg up in this, this NIL game. So as um, far as you're, you're concerned for me, I think we're doing well. Always want to get better, though. We're going to strive and try to find more opportunities and um, refine what we're doing. But I feel like we're in a great spot, and it's going to keep getting better. I think a lot of the things you see out in the media, just from being on, on this side of it, really are, you know, the truth is usually somewhere in between, right? But, but I would tell you we've had student-athletes who've made, in aggregate, over six figures. We've had student-athletes who've approached seven figures. Um, but then again, not every student athlete is, is making that kind of money. And some, you know, NIL opportunities might be something, um, as, as limited as, uh, product or merchandise or a couple of hundred dollars. So 
Uh, but what I would tell you is that we've had student athletes, both male and female, um, make over six figures, and uh, we've been proud of them and want to support them in every way. Um, so that's, if I can give you some kind of an update, I'd tell you that's where that's really really bad. That was Terry Prentiss on Out of Bounds last week on 103.7 The Buzz. And there's a lot to unpack in there. But again, I appreciate Terry coming on. And I'm going to try to get him on the podcast, maybe go into more depth, in-depth situations there. But starting with what he was talking about and comparing it to other schools, particularly in the SEC and how Arkansas has been competing with the NIL, there is no library, there is no public record, there is no database to where you can just hop in, log in, and check out and see, all right, well, what's the rest of the SEC doing as far as their NIL programs? There's nothing like that. It's just a matter of hearsay. And, uh, you know, there's going to be some uh, overbloviated numbers and, and things that get thrown out by schools because of that fact. Um, and so it's really tough to know specifically what schools are doing. But I think that was really interesting when Terry was saying how uh, when players come in or transfer in, you know, they hear a little bit about, okay, so what was your situation where you were at before? How was the NIL where you were at? And from what it sounds like and what Terry was saying, it's significantly better whenever they come from their previous schools into Arkansas and the opportunities that's provided for them. And I know that, you know, I'm not trying to toot my own horn about this. I, I, I'm, well, maybe just a little bit, but um, I've been trying to tell people this for a long time, ever since NIL started. And some people just didn't believe me when I said that, Arkansas has a phenomenal NIL setup and they have a phenomenal NIL program that is better than most of the schools and most of the SEC than people even realize. Like that's a fact. It is some of the best that you'll ever see when it comes to this particular deal with NIL. So it's already great. But the one thing that really stood out and this is where it gets people's attention. It got my attention for sure because, you know, you hear of numbers, but you don't see the exact numbers. But Terry went into it as far as saying that there have been several student athletes that have made six figures in the past year when it came to their NIL and some even around seven figures when it came to their NIL. All right. That's that's not a rumor. That's not speculation. That's straight from. The guy who is involved in the NIL at the U of A and portraying the message that he didn't give an exact figure, but when he's talking about six figures and seven figures, we know what that means. All right. We know what that means. And we know that with that type of money getting thrown around and being able to make the most out of NIL, that is what's bringing in some of the most elite players, especially the several big time student athletes that are able to see those opportunities and say, I want to be a part of Arkansas, not only because of the great culture, the, the fan base, the, the great coaching and the staff and everybody, but I see that they invest in NIL. They invest in me and they are going to provide me with those opportunities. And if you just look at it in a logical perspective, you're not going to keep every single player at the University of Arkansas from transferring. It's just not going to happen. A lot of times, again, they're asked to transfer. A lot of times it has something to do with the situation that they're in. But I, I just feel like with what Arkansas has, they are investing and they are doing their best to make the most out of their best players on campus. Out of the ones that are not only the most marketable, but also the ones that will be able to provide the most for the fans, for the program, and for uh, any type of business that's out there and, and trying to dive into it as well. So. When I, when I hear those things, it just really reiterates the fact that this is a really good thing that they got going on, folks. And I, if there's ever been rumors, which I know there have been about Arkansas not doing well in it, it's not true. Arkansas is one of the best at it. And look at it also from this logical perspective. Look at the, look at the past year and a half, two years, roughly, that NIL has been a thing. Not only was Arkansas one of the first schools to really dive into it and as Terry even said, have full-time staff members directly involved and dedicated to it. Not only are they one of the few that, few that do that, but just look at the type of players that Arkansas has been able to not only have on campus, but to keep on campus, and in some cases, bring onto campus. Now, again, it's not perfect. Not every player is going to be elite all across the board. Not every player is going to stay. It's just not the way it is. But you think about just the, cli the, the climate of what college sports are right now. If people don't feel good about their NIL, 
And especially when they're big time players, they'll go somewhere else. You know, I, I, I think about some of the superstars that have been coming around in college sports that left their schools to go to another big school. Arkansas is not having superstars leave the University of Arkansas for another big time school. Like KJ Jefferson's not leaving. Rocket Sanders is not leaving. Like Devo Davis is not leaving. Trevin Brazil's not leaving. The baseball team and the baseball players, they aren't leaving. Now, there are going to be some, and there are going to be some that are even good players. But when it comes to the elite of the elite, you have nothing to worry about here at Arkansas. Like seeing Hunter Dickinson leave Michigan. Really? I'm wondering what's going on there. He left Michigan. Why would he? It's a big time school. Sure, they got NIL. Maybe it's not as good. And you think about other big time players like in baseball. Uh, this past year, especially a lot of players that transferred in like LSU and stuff. Like, I'm not saying it, it's only NIL, but I mean, a lot of times you when those types of schools lose their best players, that might be an indication that their NIL might not be what is keeping them there. And I've, actually, Terry went into that uh, deal as well, where it by having great NIL provides opportunities to keep kids on campus where they don't feel like they need to go somewhere else. So maybe there will be some people that are in the comment section right now just like yelling at me saying you're just a homer you're you know they could be just lying to you or whatever well here's my thing it's one thing to say it but the proof is in the pudding and arkansas is not losing out on some of their best players in their major sports going elsewhere it's not to say they don't lose players it's not to say they don't lose good players or even players that they'd like to keep but when it comes to the top top the big time dudes the guys that are the ones that are providing the most for those respective programs they ain't going anywhere. They're not transferring out to some other school. They're staying right here. Think about it, folks. Be logical about it. Arkansas and the one Arkansas program is something that everybody needs to get involved in if you really want to continue on by providing opportunities of NIL for student athletes at the University of Arkansas. I think it's a great investment. Not just saying it, I believe it. I think it's a great investment. I think it's great how it's going, and I really appreciate Terry Prentice really laying it out the way he did and discussing it where it shows that there are student athletes that are making a great amount off their NIL at Arkansas. Squash the rumors because if there's one thing that Arkansas, you know, that they're going to win a championship in some sport, I hope so. Some major sport, I hope so. Will they have the number one recruiting class in some sport, I really hope so. But you know what? At the end of the day, if they don't, it's not going to be because of their lack of NIL. That's all I know. We're going to talk a little bit about the transfer portal actually here in just a second. But first, folks, with Grand Slam, no hitters and double plays, they're all back. And there's no better place to get in on the action than in the MLB than with FanDuel, America's number one sports book. That's because right now, new customers can step up to the plate with a no sweat first bet up to $1,000. Just go to FanDuel.com slash locked on. Sign up, place your first bet and get up to $1,000 back in bonus bets if your bet does not win. Not going to get a better deal than that with any of the other national brands, too. So don't miss your chance at the No Sweat First Bet up to $1,000 when you join FanDuel today. Just go to FanDuel.com slash locked on to sign up. FanDuel, the official partner of Major League Baseball. You are locked on Razorbacks, your daily podcast on the Arkansas Razorbacks. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, moving on into the next segment of the Locked On Razorbacks podcast. Uh, so many of you are just tr- still trying to eat up the, the transfer portal for basketball. It cracks me up. Like on my radio show or even in the comment section uh, on my YouTube page or my DMs or my tweets or whatever it is, I have so many people that constantly are wondering about the transfer portal in basketball and what, what's the next move. Because that's the thing with, with what Musk was doing over the past few weeks. It got really hot and heavy where there were players just boom, 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 boom. I mean, five of them coming in, da, 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 da. And when it starts moving at that high pace, you kind of get used to it. It's like, all right. So, you know, it's like you go zero to 60, you want to keep going 60 miles an hour. But when it slows down, you're wondering what's going on. Running out of gas. Is there a problem with the engine? Like, what's happening here? And so I I figured I'd address that, at least from uh, my perspective, of, uh, you know, where, where Arkansas basketball is at right now and what they're looking at in the portal and, uh, are they going to be looking at anything more? And uh, basically what my understanding is, and from what I gather, is that there are still some moves being made. There's still some contacts being made and 
still looking around at uh, the possibility of adding some pieces to the mix, but it's not as hot and heavy as it once was. There's still going to be between uh, players jumping into the portal, like potential players that are jumping into the portal. There still could be some names out there. I still think there are guys that are in the portal now that maybe have not taken official visit yet to Arkansas, but they still are talking to. It's it's happening behind the scenes, but it's just not as loud and as out there as what it was just for that week, week and a half span, which I know it was so much fun, but it's uh, it's just not that way right now. So I believe they're still trying to find um, a possible big man. Uh, I know that uh, you know people keep bringing up Hunter Dickinson. It's like, I don't know. I know he's taking a visit to Kentucky and to Kansas. So spacing off of that, I, I feel like it's probably not a uh, it's probably not a huge um, huge possibility that Arkansas gets Hunter Dickinson, but I never want to rule anything out. So it's very possible that that could be the case. And there's also possibility that you know it could just amount to nothing, and uh, they just be waiting on some of the players like Devo and Jordan Walsh and what they're going to do. Uh, but I still don't I still don't believe that. I still don't think that's going to be the case of what's happening. But I just really, really want a another big. Maybe that's selfish of me. Maybe I'm looking at it in the wrong lens. But I want another big man. And I think that because of the amount of guards that Arkansas has brought in and the talent that they're going to have on the team next year, if you could just add another quality big man where your fours or and fives are going to be Bayfall and Trevin Brazil and Jalen Graham and somebody new, which even if Makai Mitchell comes back, I'm not saying that's a bad thing at all. I mean, I'm not trying to say that. Like, I would not mind it if Makai Mitchell came back. But I'm just saying, like, you know, they're still going to try to look at every option. You, you would find yourself in a really good position because you'd have all these guards that they brought in, which are guys that can score and guys that can shoot well and guys that can get to the free throw line and shoot well. Like, you got those guys, and then you have two phenomenal offensive players already with Trevin Brazil and Jalen Graham. Uh, Brazil is obviously a lot more polished at defense, and we'll see how Graham develops, but you got those two guys. And then you got the raw ability of a Bay Fall, which defense he's really what uh, he's, he's supposedly good at and supposedly what he's known for, so that'll be nice. And then throwing another guy, whether it's Makai Mitchell or whether it's somebody else, you, like that's a, that's a huge group, a, a core group of players that can really take it to another level. And who knows, maybe some of the developments of the players on the play, uh, team last year will really put Arkansas in a good position to, to mix it up a little bit. So, uh, But there's nothing really big, noisy out there. It's more just kind of like, you know, wait and see approach and just look at it. But I know that, you know, Muss never stops. His staff never stops. And they're always going to be constantly looking at ways to get better as a basketball team. So I have complete and total faith in that. I trust them. I trust the type of program that they're trying to put together. But for those of you that have been asking like every day uh, on YouTube and in, on social media and stuff, it's just, that's just what it is. Like, and it, trust me, if there's something that ends up transpiring that I know about or that I'm hearing about or that might actually have some smoke to, you know, where's there smoke, there's fire type of deals, I'll definitely bring it up and talk about it. Like, cause I love doing that. I love talking about the transfer portal. It's awesome. But as of right now, it's just pretty quiet, which is not a bad thing. Like, that's another thing too. It's like, you don't think it was like, Oh, geez. Well, if they're not doing anything, they must be just giving up. And it's like, no, it's very calculated. It's very, they're very good at the at being tacticians of how to approach and how to get uh, go it on. But I, I'll just say that I will be shocked if Arkansas does not add at least one more player out of the transfer portal. I will be shocked. I know the numbers always got to figure themselves out, but uh, I just don't think that they're done yet. I think that there's going to be some more guys on the way. It's just a matter of when. That's kind of what we're waiting on. Uh, I want to bring up something that uh, means a lot to me, and especially with the SEC doing something stupid, which is not very often, but this is certainly something dumb. And we'll talk about that and more on the other side here on the Locked On Razorbacks podcast. You are Locked On Razorbacks, your daily podcast on the Arkansas Razorbacks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, final segment here on the Locked On Razorbacks podcast. Uh, so this is something I know a lot of you have probably talked about and have seen the uh, column from Sports Illustrated with uh, Pat Forty, who was writing about it. But essentially what it comes down to is that the SEC is mulling drastic punishments for storming the field and storming the courts. Uh, we know that there has been things that have put into place as far as 
um, fines that have been when it's like your third uh, your third offense, you get to fine two hundred and fifty thousand dollars or whatever. But it looks like the SEC is trying to look at really, really getting after it for people that are rushing rushing the field or rushing the court and revamping their policies because they're going to have SEC spring meetings from May thirtieth to June second down there in Destin, and so uh, it could be uh, could be happening. But a few of the policy changes again. This comes from Pat Forty. The premise of losing a future SEC home game is just one of the policy changes that are being discussed when the working group. But an even more drastic one is the forfeiture of the game in which the field storm occurred. It is unlikely to gain traction, but there is general agreement that something more needs to be done beyond hitting schools in their fat wallets. They know that the, the revenue has been coming in, and I guess uh, the first violation was 50000 second violation 100000 third violation 250000 and so uh, they, they're saying that the schools are just writing that off because of the amount of money that they're bringing in. And it has to do with it. They always bring about safety concerns and stuff like that, which apparently when I was looking at it, some of the schools that are really in favor of this is Alabama, Georgia, and Kentucky, which, yeah, uh, Alabama, Georgia for football reasons and Kentucky for basketball reasons. So that's, of course, why they're in it because they're never going to rush the field for them. Um, but anyways, I, I hate this. Like, I hate the fact that this is even a thing. I hate the fact that the SEC is mulling this because I'm like, you guys have a lot more bigger fish to fry. Why don't you guys figure out targeting first before you start doing this? But here's my thing. There's going to be some of you that probably are yelling at me because it's like it's a liability issue. Somebody's going to get hurt. All it takes is one. Here's my thing. Every single time, like this, first off, this has been going on from the beginning. People rushing the field and rushing the court. It has happened in every conference, at every level, at high school, college. It, it happens. And at least as far as as many times as it's happened, which happens every year, multiple times, there have not been any sort of significant type of issues that have gone on at a high percentage. Like that's not to say that there hasn't been some times here and there where there were problems, but for the most part, it's been pretty safe and everybody's been fine and everybody's gotten out of there fine. But if you want to look at it, it's like, in fact, the thing that I feel like has happened more recently has been actually players causing problems to the fans. Like the Alabama player that knocked out the Tennessee girl when she was running on the field because he was scared for his life or whatever the Nick Saban said, which is the biggest bunch of crap I've ever heard. So dumb. So if anything, it's been the players that have caused problems. Some people are just like, ah, the fans don't belong in the field and all that. I'm okay. And you know what? Take that, take that route, take that opinion. My opinion is, is that. It's one of the great things about college sports that makes it unique compared to all the professional sports because, you know, professional sports are fine, but as like time goes on, I start to really hate professional sports or at least not appreciate them as much as I do college. And it's just because it's like, if you think about the fans that are in there in the NFL, like in the NFL or the NBA, it's like, you know, I mean, it just, it doesn't seem like it's like, you know, what's really the passion there? You got some overloaded teams and free, it's like, it just starts to get to the point where it's just not as fun. And college sports are fun. Yeah, it's not going to be ever as popular as the professional sports. But, I mean, is there anything better than seeing, you know, a team go down, as a number one team go down on the road to an underdog where they storm the court and seeing all the pictures they're taking and, and hanging out and the, and the players dancing? Like, like when Arkansas stormed the court against Auburn, that was so much fun. And then you think about when Arkansas stormed the field against Texas, how much fun that was. And how many people like you, the listeners and watchers, those memories that you have. It's like, that's what makes it so great. So I don't want to see st stupid, over-the-top, ridiculous rules of saying, oh, you could lose the game if you storm the field. Because then that's the case if, I, if I'm a opposing fan, I'm just going to go storm the field on the other team. And get them having to lose the game. I just don't think there's enough ways you can police it. I just don't think there's enough ways to regulate it. And I think it just uh, is something that, like, if you're talking about if, if it's not as big of a problem as you're making it out to be. And I have always said this about rules, about policy changes. And I, I don't care if it's government. I don't care if it's sports. I don't care about any of that stuff. If there is something that happens that you are wanting to change or to take away, but yet 99.9% .9 or at least the vast, 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 vast majority of the times that those things happen or the people that are involved have no problem with it then it doesn't need to be changed or taken away because of the small little percentage that does. That's bad policy making. I said the same thing about the whole handshake line thing that was going on in sports. 
where you had women's basketball players that were punching other basketball players in the handshake line. Now we need to do it the way the handshake line. No, just don't be an idiot. Don't be a douchebag and knock, try to knock somebody out. Don't be a tool. How about that? When's accountability come into play? Stop just saying, eh, we'll just take it away. Doesn't need to be here. Or how about you just not be a jerk? Okay? Maybe you should try that out. So I hope it doesn't change. I, I hope that it still is, can be part of the game and can be done in a, in a way. I, I'm not saying they can't change anything, but just make it to where it doesn't impact the team or the wins or the losses because there's something special about it and it's going to be fine. So don't try to make a mountain out of a molehill. That's all I'm asking. Appreciate everybody listening in to Locked On Razorbacks Your Backs podcast. Be sure to like and subscribe to the podcast on iTunes or on Google Play. You can also get after me on Twitter, Buzz John Neighbors. For any questions, comments, concerns that you may have, we'll keep it going from there. Same podcast time, same podcast channel tomorrow afternoon. Have a great day, everybody. We'll see you then.